What's up guys? Hi and welcome to Uncle Scott's Kitchen. Today I thought we would go through some gift ideas for dads who love to cook. As my qualification, I am a dad who loves to cook. All right, got a lot of products here. These are all things I use, I like. Uh, these were not provided by any company for any kind of marketing purposes. Everything up here I have either bought myself or received as a gift. And I like all these things. Now, we're going to have a wide variety of price ranges here. There should be something for everyone from less than $40 up to well over $500 if you want to get out your wallet. Now these are all very high quality products. They all produce delicious food. I really enjoy using these things. They're from good, solid, high-end brands and manufacturers, very good build quality. They produce delicious food. And perhaps most importantly for a gift list, these things make me happy. They actually bring me joy. I love to cook using these things. Let's take a look at these chef's knives. I really like these. This is a Kramer, Bob Kramer, 10 inch carbon steel chef's knife, very high in there. They come in different sizes. And this one is a Wusthof. I have enough trouble with English trying to pronounce these foreign brand names. Now a note on this Bob Kramer, this one is a carbon steel. There's a little bit of extra maintenance with carbon steel. They will develop a patina. They will rust if you don't dry them quickly after you wash them. Not everybody likes carbon steel. They make the same knife though with a stainless steel blade. So for a little bit less maintenance, you might want to go with a stainless steel. This one is very high end. I think I paid about $350 for this one. Completely ridiculous. And the Boosthof, slightly less ridiculous at about $180 for this one. This is an 8 inch chef's knife. Good looking knife, has a nice balance to it has this shaped handle, fits nicely in my hand. An absolute pleasure to chop and cut with. And of course, if you got a good knife, you need a good cutting board. This one you might have seen in some of my other videos. This one is a Pro-Teak, very heavy, solid, and I think a very, very beautiful cutting board. As a matter of fact, we had that cutting board for over a year. My wife would not let me use it. She said, it's too beautiful. If you use it, you're going to mess it up. We went back and forth on this thing. So after a year, she finally let me start cutting on it. And the compromise is I can use one side of the cutting board. We keep one side pristine and beautiful. The other I can cut on. But absolutely a fantastic cutting board. Let's take a look at cast iron. Guys love cast iron. Now, you might already have one of these. If not, you should definitely get one. This is a Lodge 12 inch cast iron skillet. This should be one of the foundational building blocks of anyone's kitchen, in my opinion. Less than $40 most times. Absolutely tough as nails. You can do things like high temp sears of steaks, cook a big ribeye in that thing. You can fry veggies, you can do bacon and eggs. It can go from stovetop to oven. You can make cornbread in it. And if you take care of them, they will become absolute family heirlooms. You will hand them down to your kids and grandkids. As a matter of fact, this ginormous pan is a Lodge cast iron skillet that was my great granddad's, about 70 years old. I'm going to hand that down to my son someday. So good old Lodge cast iron, fantastic gift, and you will get a lifetime of use out of it if you take care of it. Now, if the dad already has a Lodge cast iron skillet, you might want to check out something like this Lodge 14 inch cast iron wok. Do really great stir fries at home with this thing. Or, if the dad is anything of an outdoorsman, you might want to look at a Lodge camp Dutch oven. Guys love these things. We take this thing camping all the time. You can tell it's definitely been used. We use it all the time. Every time we go camping, make beef stew in this thing, make chili, make cobbler. Now, if you do any type of car camping, if you've got an RV, if you do any tailgating, these things are fantastic. It's got 
this handle, this loop ring handle here, you can suspend it over a campfire. But what you notice is that on the bottom has these three feet. And that is so you can set this thing down over coals. Lots of people, me included, use charcoal. You can set this thing on top of charcoal briquettes. And you notice the lid has a lip. And that is so you can put more charcoal or coals from a fire on the lid. So you get the lid hot, you get heat underneath, and you get that oven effect inside. Absolutely fantastic and fun. Many of the recipes you see in some of the cookbooks will designate what size Dutch oven they are optimized for. Many of the recipes are optimized for a 12 inch, six quart Dutch oven. That's what this one is. It's a great one to start with. Now, is there a man cave involved? Doesn't every guy dream of having a sports bar in his basement? I know I do. And if you're gonna do that, what you need is your own deep fryer. My wife got me this Tefal Easy Clean model a couple of years ago. Had great luck with it. I really like this thing. Not only does it produce delicious food, it's got built-in oil filtration and storage in the unit. I really like that. So this thing will produce homemade fries, fried chicken, onion rings, jalapeno poppers, things you would get in a real sports bar. You can make it for yourself in your own basement, in your own man cave. I really do like that. Now, after I got my deep fryer, I put on a few pounds. The next Christmas, my wife got me this Phillips air fryer. So if you're a little bit more health conscious, don't wanna eat too many fried foods, this Phillips air fryer is a great way to go. Been using this for over a year, had great luck with it so far. Now, what about some carbon steel? Oh yeah, carbon steel. We love carbon steel around here. The whole reason I have a YouTube channel and do these videos is my wife got me a carbon steel skillet several Christmases ago. I had some trouble with the seasoning. There was a bunch of bad advice on the internet. I resolved to figure it out. And I thought to myself, well, there's probably some other people out there like me. I did a video on how to get those things up and running and cooking correctly, and they took off, and now I have a YouTube channel. So carbon steel is near and dear to my heart, as always. Now, for buying someone a gift, if someone asked me, what is the one pan you could buy where you don't have to worry, you can't go wrong with this pan, I would recommend the Debouye Mineral B Pro. Very important to get the professional model. This one has the older handle. The new ones have this handle. Cast stainless steel handle. It's oven safe. It's kind of a French style handle. When you get a new carbon steel skillet, they start out, they arrive shiny and silvery. Then you give those things a seasoning kind of sort of like a cast iron skillet don't let that deter you don't let that give you headaches we have a lot of videos on precisely how to do that and then they start darkening in that seasoning it builds up layer after layer and the more you use these things the more non-stick they get now these mineral b pros they're thick they're heavy that thickness and heaviness has a couple of benefits one is that if you are doing a high temp sear of say a big thick ribeye steak. That heavy metal has a big thermal mass. It retains a lot of heat. It can maintain a sear on a big thick steak. No big deal there. Also, some carbon steel pans, especially the bigger ones that are thin, they're prone to warping issues on flat top stoves. These Debouye Mineral B Pros at the bigger sizes, they're three millimeters thick. They also have a slight upward bow in the bottom of the pan that helps to mitigate any potential warping issues. So this pan will perform very well on gas stove tops, electric and induction. You can also go from stove top to oven with that cast stainless steel handle. And I gotta say, I think it's a good looking pan too. So if I were to pick one carbon steel skillet, I would pick a Debouye Mineral B Pro. Now around here, a lot of times we talk about a three pan strategy. I think every kitchen should have a good cast iron, a good carbon steel, also a good stainless steel skillet. 
With those three skillets, you can darn near cook anything on your stovetop. Now, we've covered the cast iron and the carbon steel. What about some nice stainless steel pans? This one here is an all-clad copper core five-ply frying pan. Got great cooking results from that one. And this one is another is another debouille, also a five ply. This has three internal cores of aluminum. The all clad has two aluminum and one copper. I really do enjoy cooking with these skillets. They are at the top end of the stainless steel frying pan range. All clad made in North America, made in Pennsylvania, I believe. So if you're a believer in made in the USA, that's a good one to go with. If you kind of like the French snootiness, if you like the French design of the handle and the look of this one, this one is made in France and I really do like the way this one cooks. And those you can find usually in the mid two to $300 range. So they're getting pretty expensive, but not off the charts yet. Speaking of going up in price, the Beatles once sang a song and the line said, you can't buy me love, can't buy me love. But if you're determined to try and really want to get out your wallet, let's look at a couple of high-end items. Uh, the first is a good old Le Creuset enamel Dutch oven. Everybody dreams of having one of these things. This one is my wife's. She's actually letting me touch it for this video. It produces fantastic results. Now I have a Martha Stewart cast iron enamel Dutch oven. I have a Lodge, I have a Tramontina, and we have this Le Creuset. The difference is this Le Creuset, I actually look forward to cooking in it. It is an absolute joy. It makes you happy to cook in this one. Martha Stewart, eh. And now moving on up the food chain. These are some high-end, high-ticket items. This is another Debouillet pan. This is one of their Eno Cuivre coppers, copper frying pan. Now copper arrives nice and shiny. If you let the patina develop and cook, them, cook in them a bunch, this is the way they look. This one is a two millimeter thick pan, stainless steel lined, a nice French style cast iron handle. And these are some Maviels. These are a little bit thicker, also stainless steel lined. And when it comes to buying copper cookware, I would get the absolute thickest you can find and afford. These Maviels, this model is what's called the 250. That stands for two and a half millimeters thick. You'll also see nomenclature and a description that says something like 90-10. That means that 90% of the pan's thickness is copper and 10% is the stainless steel lining. Get that if you can find it and, and you can afford it. Now, Maviel is also making some 200 series. That's two millimeters thick. They also make a 150 series. That's 1.5 millimeters thick. The Debouillet pan that I just highlighted is also two millimeters thick. Now, there's hyperinflation. These things get expensive. I realize that. But I would avoid that 1.5 millimeter thick copper. My minimum that I would buy would be two millimeters thick. Um, and I really prefer to get that two and a half millimeters thick. The two is fine. The two and a half is a little bit better. If you find that you can't afford that, I would not buy cheap copper. I would just get one of the high end stainless steel skillets instead. Now, as a dad who loves to cook, I would be absolutely ecstatic to receive any of these as a gift on Christmas morning. As a matter of fact, if I did, I'd probably do some cooking Christmas afternoon. If you'd like to get any of these for yourself, check out the shopping links below the video. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps with your holiday shopping for 2021. We'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Kitchen.